some of the best things about doing triathlon is the people you meet the places you go to um so yeah i'm really excited for that new adventure welcome to the cool down a bailiwick express podcast where we meet the people making the sports headlines Thank you for listening, I'm Nick Mann. This week I spoke to triathlete Megan Chappell, who has just brought the curtain down on a 22-race season with a second-place finish at an Ironman 70.3 in Portugal. Find out how she has navigated the pressures of such a busy race schedule, where she goes next, and firstly how she stayed motivated after a high of a gold medal at the Guernsey Island Games. Yeah, now I was obviously keen, keen to catch up after um, the result in, in Portugal, but... Can we take things back a little bit? Um, because obviously we're about three months on from the Island Games now. And um, how have you coped with coming down from the high that that must have been and kept kept motivated and kept going? Yeah, um, I mean, it was such an incredible week. It was so special to, to race at home with so many friends and family there. Um, yeah, it was beyond uh special and I think probably one of my favorite races of the year um being at home and, and racing there again because I don't think I've raced um a triathlon in, in Guernsey for probably in over a year now maybe Granite Man was the last one I did which was yeah over a year ago um so yeah it was really really special um but yeah I mean I still had quite a lot of other key races uh, to crack on with after that so um 70.3 world champs in Finland was sort of middle of August so it was about a month after um I think additionally straight after getting back from Guernsey I went up to Scotland I did the um Grand Fondo world champs there which was yeah just a bike race which was a really good experience and then I also did the British uh triathlon champs as well up in Sunderland so yeah I, I don't think I could really sort of switch off um I had to kind of keep focused and you know I love racing and it, it's taken me to so many different parts of the world so it, w- it was nice to have something else to focus on after that as well. You've obviously kept kept that racing up but so what, what was the decision process behind going to Portugal? Um, it was kind of like a nice end of season the the course looked good um it's not too far away it just kind of worked I mean Barcelona last year was a similar time but I'm not a massive fan of doing the same race twice especially for sort of the 70.3 ones because there are so many so many different races around the world so it's nice to go somewhere different and try a new course um so yeah it was it just was the timing really that worked and how like in terms of the preparation as well like you're you're moving from standard distance to 70.3 to some running races and some cycling in there as well like how do you balance all of those different competing interests yeah I mean I think my coach has just kept my training quite consistent I think the training between doing a standard distance and 70.3 distance isn't too dissimilar um obviously you have limitations like while being an amateur athlete and how much you can train so you, you I think in general my training didn't really change when I when I did the marathon earlier this year I had to increase the running a little bit um and also I think it he tried to get me to do a, a few longer rides for some of the the bike races that I've done this year that were a bit longer as well so just to like mentally prepare but I think having done triathlon for sort of six years now I've built sort of a bit of an endurance base that I can rely on that even if I'm not necessarily doing the trip the the amount of training that some of the people are doing if they're just pure runners or pure cyclists. So Portugal, a bit of an end of season uh, race for you, but obviously it went really well. What were your expectations going into it and your approach to it? It was it was tough to keep motivated, I must admit, I think because it's the last race of the season um, and I hadn't really raced in, in about a month. I think I did a 10k at the start of September some, somewhere around there so it was quite a gap um but I think I knew it was going to be competitive there was a few um girls that I know were going over from the UK that were competitive and then you never know about the other countries as well um so it was it was always going to be a, a difficult one um so I think going in that with that mentality as well as that well I, I, I want to keep focus and, and do well at this one as well so like end the season on a high um but yeah, it was 
it was one that I kind of struggled with the most I think this year just to keep motivated because it's, it's entering into October nearly November uh the weather's not so great and it's just yeah I think mentally and physically your body's like it's ready to to have a bit of a break and how how did it all pan out on the day um so I've had a bit of a cold the week before I, just, I think just everyone in the UK has been catching a cold COVID whatever it's been um so that was a bit of a bummer um I haven't been ill all year so it's just really rubbish timing um which did it didn't affect me too much but it's just been a, a, like a bit of a cough and a, and a sniffle which kind of got to me a bit psychologically psychologically as well because 70.3 is is considerably harder than a standard distance I'd say like it takes a lot out of your body like the recovery is quite a bit longer and in general like you're obviously doubling the distance so you need to be fit and healthily healthy on the, on the start line to, to end up feeling like you can actually put a good effort in because obviously you, you do the swim you do the bike and then you get to the end and you still got a half marathon to do so <laughs> yeah it, it's a lot on the body um but in general I actually sort of woke up on race day feeling okay um and I was sort of still still quite hungry for it um I really wanted to have a good result like I say to just feel like I've, I've ended the season on a high um so the swim was good it was um really nice sea swim I always love sea swims uh in comparison to the sort of lakes and rivers uh the bike course was um it was kind of a two halves I would say so it's very hilly rolling on the start at, from the start the first half of it you're heading up sort of like into into the mountains kind of thing so it's about 800 900 meters of climbing out for about 40k and then you basically drop down um, and come back out on the coastline and then you are going roughly 20 kilometers all the way out along the coastline into sort of like Lisbon heading to Lisbon from Cascais um, so that was pretty special as well it's so beautiful all the way along the coast road but then that you there you just had to get your head down and, and go as hard as you could because it was it was quite windy quite exposed um, and I think if you were on your own it would have been quite a long tough race but trying to find a few good people to kind of sit with obviously not drafting but kind of just to be in good company um yeah so the bike was good I found like you got you got you got to go around one of the, the race tracks there which was a really cool experience um but then yeah getting on to the run I didn't really feel like I had the legs um I tried to just grim and bear sort of feeling a bit flat but there's only so much you can do when your legs don't really want to work um I think it might have been partly just having a bit of a cold um maybe I biked too hard I'm not sure um but I still felt like I executed a good race I know that I was about two three minutes off off the leader in the end um which I think I was sort of closing a bit on the run um but yeah I definitely just didn't have enough to to have a, a good run at the end unfortunately sounds a bit of an end of season race like yeah feel like everything building up and fatigue coming in like you um we were saying earlier it's tw 20 races this season something something yeah. like that I, mean, I was what lessons have you learned through the year um I think what lessons have I learned I suppose in, in general it's just about making sure that you do allow yourself to recover from those as well like I I am pretty good at bouncing back and I think my recovery is it's improved so much I think because when you race obviously you put your body under so much strain but in terms of like feeling fatigued and doms like my recovery has been a lot better than I remember in previous years um which I think it probably is just ad adapting um but yeah, I think I've learned to enjoy it and my nerves, I, can't, I don't really get that nervous anymore for races, which is, it's really nice because I know that that can absolutely kill some people in, in races. So that's sort of what, one less thing to, to worry about. I think the more the race you race, the more you get used to it and you can kind of get on the start line and and just trust the process and, and know that you've done the training, um, which is, yeah, a nice feeling. What's your focus going to be? Uh, looking into next season then um so it's a bit of a different one for me I, I've just well when I um did Portugal I qualified for the 70.3 world champs which is in New Zealand um but I'm actually moving to Australia in January so that's a big life wow. change um and it's it's kind of a a bit of a break for me in terms of seeing what what's going to come I, I'm not 
I'm not wanting to move away from triathlon at all. Um, I'm hoping that, you know, there will be good foundations there, good, good culture for um, triathlon. Um, but I'm just not sure what's going to happen. Obviously, it's all the way on the other side of the world. And um, I don't know how I'm going to ship my bikes at the moment. So it's all a bit up in the air. Um, but I'm really keen to sort of just ex- explore the sport sport in another country um, and see what happens. I mean, I guess that's going to be exciting as well as intimidating in terms of the different environments you can get into and different opportunities you might get out there. Yeah, exactly. I, I love that, though. I think some of the best things about doing triathlon is the people you meet, the places you go to. Um, so, yeah, I'm really excited for that new adventure. I think in terms of like personally what I want to do um, will just be to to see what happens and see what comes my way. Sure. Um, because I do feel like I've reached my peak in in the sport, so I don't want to go professional. But like, I think it'll be hard to to continue to not continue because you know when you you reach like the the top end of a sport in in sort of like the amateur to world, it's like well, I don't really want to step back from that because I love it and it's what I'm good at. Um, but yeah, it's it's hard to know exactly what what's going to happen next year at the moment. That was the cool down. Thanks again for listening. Please like and subscribe for more. You can find all our sports news on gsy.bailiwickexpress.com and on all our social channels. Sign up to our daily email to keep up to date on all the work the Express team does. 